Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to write the functionality for our setup fragment so that we have to enter our name and weight before we can use the app. And then we are able to use that weight and name and inject it into our other fragments so we can use it there. So first of all, I want to go into our app module here and provide a shared preferences object because we're going to use that shared preferences object to on the one hand, save that name of the user and save the weight. And we're also going to save what I call a first time toggle. That is just a Boolean that we set to true when the, when the user launched the app for the first time so that we only show that setup fragment on the first launch of our app. So that will be a provides function here, which we have to annotate with add provides and we also need to annotate it with add singleton since we're inside of our app module here we only have singletons in here and that function i'm going to call provide shared preferences we need the application context to get those shared preferences so we annotate that with add application context again call it app and that is a context and we're going to set that equal to app.getSharedPreferences. Here we need a name for our shared preferences for which I will create a constant in our constants file. Let's open that in our other package, constants. Here I'll create a const val shared preferences name. And I'm going to set that to shared pref. And I'm also going to create the constants for our keys that we will have in our shared preferences. We won't need them right now, but later in this video, const val key first time toggle. And that is that Boolean I talked about, which I'm just going to set to the same. And we can duplicate that two more times. We're going to have a key for our name. And we're going to have a key for our weight. So key underscore weight, copy that, paste it. And that is it. And then we can go back to our app module. In here, in the get shared preferences function, we now need to pass the name of our shared preferences. So that is just shared preferences name, the constant we just created. And we need to have a mode in which we want to open those shared preferences, which is just mode private in our case. So only our app is allowed to read from those shared preferences. And next, I'm going to open our setup fragment. So UI package, fragments, setup fragment. And in here, I'm going to write a function, private function, write personal data to shared pref. Doesn't take any parameters, but it will return a Boolean because if this fails, for example, if we didn't enter anything for the first, uh, for, the, for the name or for the weight, mm -hmm. then we of course don't want to save an empty string in our shared preferences. Instead, we want to show a snack bar that tells the user that he should enter some values there. So in here, first of all, we need to get the value of our name text field, our name edit text, val name is equal to et name dot text dot to string and we are going to have a val weight is equal to et weight dot text dot to string then we can check if name dot is empty or our weight dot is empty in that case we want to show that snack bar so here we just return false and we're going to show the snack bar in another function when we just check if this function returned true or false. And now we want to save those values, that name and that weight to our shared preferences because at that point here, we know that those text fields are not empty. And that means we now need access to our shared preferences object that we provided in our app module. So you can see we need to inject that for that, as you already know, we need to annotate our fragment with at Android entry point because a fragment is an Android component. And we also need to inject our shared preferences here. So we annotate that with at inject and then specify a late init var shared pref or shared preferences. Now let's call it shared pref. And that is of type shared preferences. And that's already it. Now we can use it in our function. 
And to actually write something to our shared preferences, we use sharepref.edit to basically get in that edit mode. And then we can just put some key value pairs in those shared preferences. First of all, we're going to put the string. Now we need to specify the key with which we want to access that string later. And those are the keys I specified in our constants file. So those three keys here. First of all, we want to save the name. So we pass key underscore name here, import that. And the value for that is just our name. And then we do the same for our weight. So we want to put a float here, key weight this time, and we pass our weight dot to float here. And now you might wonder why we don't check if that is actually convertible to a float, because what if the user enters some string there that we can't convert to float? That can't happen because I set the input type of our edit text here to decimal number. So the only thing that the user can enter are actually decimal numbers. And that's why we don't need to check that here. Then we finally want to put our Boolean, put Boolean key first time toggle. And here we're going to put false. So that will just mean that this is not the first launch of our app afterwards. So when we save that in our shared preferences, when that key exists, then we, are, we know for sure that the user already opened this app in the past. Afterwards, we can just use start apply, which will write all those shared preferences, all those key value pairs into our shared preferences object. And there is also, also a function dot commit that is synchronous, apply is asynchronous. So we should use the asynchronous option here. Now we just want to use that name that we entered here and update our toolbar text accordingly. So val toolbar text is equal to let's go. And then we want to insert that name here and an exclamation mark. And then we want to write require activity dot toolbar TV toolbar title. That is the text view in our toolbar. And we want to set its text to our toolbar text. And then since everything went well at this point, we can return true in this function and basically tell everyone else that this function saved everything in the shared preferences. So our name, our rate and our first time toggle and that we can go on. All right. So next in our on click listener here, when we click on continue, we want to have a variable success. And we're going to set that to write personal data to shared press because when we click on continue, we want to check if the user entered all fields. And if that was successful, we want to navigate to our run fragment here. And if not, we just want to show that snack bar. So if success, we want to navigate, oops, navigate to our run fragment. And else if that wasn't successful, so the user left some fields blank, then we want to show snack bar, snack bar dot make pass require view and the text, please enter all the fields. I'm going to choose snack bar dot length short here and I'm going to call that show afterwards. Then we're going to go back to our app module and provide those single entries. So the name, the weight and the first time toggle too. So we don't always need to get our shared preferences to get those. Instead, we can directly inject those basically. So in our app module here, um, I want to have another singleton here, singleton and add provides function provide name, which will require our shared pref object. And we're going to set that equal to shared preferences, shared pref dot get string key name, import that. And here we need to specify a default value. So in case that key name does not exist, then we just want to return an empty string. And for some reason, this get string function for shared preferences behaves very strangely on Kotlin because usually we define a default value here if that key doesn't exist, but it can still happen uh, that this get string function returns null for whatever reason. And because of that, we also need to make a null check here. So in case that get string function returns null, we also want to return an empty string. Don't ask me why that is, but we have to do it. 
And then we can actually copy that function, and paste it below, do the same for our key weight, and also swap this out for get float. The default value for our weight, I'm going to choose ADF here. And here we don't need that option with that null check. You can see the IDE even marks this in gray now because it's not necessary. But for this function here, it doesn't. So that's really confusing because for the float function, this doesn't work in a different way. Here we also have that default value if that key doesn't exist. So maybe you know the solution while well, the reason why that happens. I don't know it, but it's also not important for us. We're just going to paste this one more time. Oh, and by the way, also change the name of this function to provide weight. And we're going to provide the first time toggle. Change this to get boolean key first time toggle here. Let's move this whole thing into the next line. And the default value for that is true. And also remove this null check here. So and then we're going to go back to our setup fragment. We're going to inject uh, the value for our first time toggle. So here we want to check if that is now the first launch of that app or if the user already launched that app because then we don't want to show that setup fragment again. Instead, we want to directly navigate the user to our run fragment. So we are going to inject the variable here for our is first app open. And I'm going to set that to true initially. And we want to inject that and now that is important because a Boolean is a primitive data type, not like shared preferences here, for example. Because of that, we cannot choose late init var here. If I do that, you can see we get an error. And because of that, we need to, we, need, we can't write add inject here. Instead, we need to write add set inject. And now we're going to use that is first time app open Boolean in our on view created function here. We're going to check if is first app open is false. So that means the user already entered his details and then we want to directly navigate him to the run fragment. And here I'm going to define nav options because when we navigate the user to the run fragment, then the, the default behavior is to put the setup fragment on the back stack. So if the user presses the back button in our run fragment, then he will be navigated back to the setup fragment. And we of course don't want that if he already entered his details. So what we need to do is we need to remove the setup fragment from our back stack. So we're going to set this to nav options dot builder. Import nav options here. We call dot set pop up to. So we want to pop some fragments here. And here I'm going to pass the ID of our fragment that we want to pop. So r.id.fragment dot fragment setup fragment and we pass um, true for inclusive so that we want to pop this fragment too basically. In, in our case we only have a single fragment that we want to pop here but we could also use this function to pop several fragments and then this true basically means that we also want to pop the latest fragment that we pass here basically. Then we can call dot build afterwards and use our nav controller, find nav controller dot navigate, pass our r dot id dot action setup fragment to run fragment. Here we need to pass our saved instance state and finally our nav options. And that's basically it for this block. And the last thing I want to do in this video is to go in our tracking fragment because inside of this fragment we are using that weight variable here that we just set to 80 by default. So every time any user makes a run, we choose the weight ADF, 80 kilograms for that weight and calculate the burned calories with that. And of course we want to use the weight that the user entered here. So we're going to use at set inject again because float is also a prim primitive data type. And we can't make this a private var if we want to inject something. And now that will be injected. And then if we launch our app now, we can try out if everything is working. Now you see we're navigated to our setup fragment because that is the first app launch basically. 
here we can enter our name and our weight and or let's actually leave one of those empty for now click on continue and you can see a snack bar pops up please enter all the fields so we do that click on continue and then you there you see let's go philip is in the toolbar and our weight should also be set accordingly and if we now close our app and relaunch it then we shouldn't see that setup fragment you can see we're directly navigated to our run fragment and also when we click on the back arrow now then that would close our app and doesn't navigate us to the setup fragment again so i hope this video taught you something new if so please let me know in the comments below and also if you have any questions just ask them below and also leave a like for this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already have a nice day see you in the next video bye bye